Another day on this grind from scratch to scratch, where I start from scratch completely nothing to try to become a scratch golfer by every means possible, scavenging the world for the greatest coaches in the world. And today we are back with one of those coaches, Rick Sesson House, to do a whole body tutorial of the swing from the lower body to the takeaway, to the backswing, and even the downswing. So let's get into it. All right, Rick. Yes, Jerome. <laughs> Since our last encounter, I've aggregated a lot of questions. Yeah. And so I wanted to kind of just run them by you. Sure. The number one thing that at uh, top of mind is kind of like the bump and turn, which is the main thing we're trying to do sure. here. And one thing I'm kind of realizing when I do the bump from top of here, I slightly stand up to mm -hmm. get to this posting and right. then I'm slightly over early extending. So a lot of beginner golfers, early intermediate players, yeah. um, getting the proper sequence is so important. Mm -hmm. And we start from the ground floor up. Yeah. And as instructors, we want to help people understand that there's going to be some level of rotation that's happening. There's mm -hmm. some lateral and then there is a little launching, which we're not going to get into too yeah. much. Most golfers, they do, they do a lot of the rotation part, yeah. but we had to first coach you a little bit more to move over to the left side. Mm -hmm. I did it very much just laterally, right? Yeah. But you bring up a good point. If, if I do it laterally, but now I've changed my posture, and in this case we're calling that early extension, right? I would yeah. want to stay in the same spot I started. If I move away from that, uh, that's going to cause some getting stuck, having to flip. There's some other combinations there. Yeah. I believe you've done a better job getting the left side. Mm -hmm. So we, we've achieved the actual transfer, the lateral. Yeah. But as you mentioned, it's it's actually causing another issue. Yeah. So you mentioned we were we were talking off camera about you know being able to feel like you almost like a 45 in a way, right? We're in this this right glute muscle. It's almost imagining we get into the gl left glute muscle at 45, right? So now it's over here. Mm -hmm. instead of just going laterally, mm -hmm. okay? So it's gonna happen all at the same time, right? I'm into the left side and I'm over here. So imagine that I have this stick or this wall here and I need to stay on that, right? Boom. Yeah. So that's where we want you. Now I am moving laterally as I do that, but I'm feeling like my hip goes in almost a 45 degree angle here. So it's boom, right? So we may have to experiment a little bit with what that feeling is, okay. as if I put that wall here. So it's kind of like a merge then of like, I kind of tried this last night just to see what that would feel like. It's kind of like, um, I'm kind of sinking Correct. into the floor with this being like a very prominent feeling of like getting in and then going there. Perfect, right? Okay. There is a squat move happening. That gets yeah. into our third phase, which is gonna be using the ground to create a little bit more force. Mm -hmm. And that is, we, we, we don't make a transition and go here, right? We yeah. are down a little bit first. A, mm -hmm. You know, some people say it's a squat move. Okay, I'm yeah. down. I wanna feel like I'm in here a little bit on that first move, um, which is a great feeling. It okay. is. And yes, now as we get to a better, a higher level, yeah. it's a blending of the two. It's blending of bump, turned. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I have to teach it individually first, but now we're blending it. Right? Okay. We're blending it this way. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would I would certainly are going to work on. Solid question here, because I know we've kind of talked about this. This is nine iron. Yes. Um, and then seven, six, uh, five, whatever. In regards to the distance of my feet, but like, I know I'm usually sm shorter when I'm hitting wedges. So I'm assuming that's kind of obviously drivers like this. Like, What's a good like rule of thumb of like, okay, this is nine iron, this is like closer here. Yeah, everybody's builds are slightly different yeah. and as far as how their mobility is, mm -hmm. so, and balance. Like some people don't balance very well, we have to get them wider in the stance. So if we have this nine iron, roughly ankle joint, shoulder joint, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of running that way. Uh, you build a house, the foundation is usually wider than the, than the you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. it's going like this, right? So I would say <laughs> ankle joint, about shoulder joint, here. Okay, so kind of like Yeah, here. and again, as we get to a five iron, it's gonna go a little bit wider and a little bit wider yeah. uh, with that. Okay. okay, sounds good. What I look at is, can somebody get to their left side properly? Mm -hmm. If they were too wide, they may not be able to even get there, so I yeah. narrow them up a little bit. Okay. Or they're so narrow that their knee goes way past and their balance is off. Mm -hmm. So I usually look at somebody's mobility before I make major adjustments with the feet. Okay. That. But that's a great question to get started correctly. So if we go back to this idea that we, when we go back, we wanna make sure that our right glute muscle will stay on this golf shaft. So okay. you go back and you load it. So our right butt cheek is in there, it's loaded for sure. Yeah. Your goal is certainly to move into the left side, but your left glute muscle 
needs to get reconnected with this, this golf shaft. Okay. So as you do it slowly, boom, you're there. There's no question you got there quickly. Yeah. Awesome. So before we even hit a ball, what did you have to think or feel in order to get there? So the movement in my mind is kind of like a turn, a swivel of like my knees without, and I'm feeling you just in here, kind of like that. Yeah. Great, a swiveling of, the, of there, but there was some weight that you felt in the feet. Yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, let's do that one more time. And I'm gonna do it from the other angle so you can have a little more freedom um, okay. on the follow through. So right butt cheek and then left butt cheek. Boom. Okay, good. Let's do it one more time without the, the club there. Can you still get the same sensation without having this as a cue? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, did you accomplish it? Yeah. Great. Now that we had a little more freedom to it on both sides, was it the same feeling as you told me before? Yeah. Great. So we've taken it from the concept, which we understand that we do want to have, they rotate, they move laterally, and we want to maintain that posture. So we said, you know, the, the culprit of early extension was you weren't quite sure how to get over. Mm -hmm. You got over, but unfortunately we lost some of that posture. Yeah. Now you're feeling, like you said, with the feet, the knees, we're keeping that structure, we're keeping that, that posture longer. Yep. Awesome. So it's not that you have to go at full speed now, but we are gonna put the ball there now. Your only goal is you're maintaining the glute muscles on a imaginary wall. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna do it until you, you're ready to swing, but there's our wall. Right glute is into it, left glute, the follow through. Okay, whatever the ball does, it does. Your only focal point was, did you achieve that goal? I think so. Then great, you gave yourself a gold star. We're gonna do one more, I'm gonna video this one. Okay. Did we achieve it? I think that might have been a little less exaggerated, but I think so. Yeah, you, you moved a touch more into that left front foot there, a little balance was a little more that way. Um, so now as we look, again, we're imagining that there's that wall behind us. So you definitely load really, really well in the right butt cheek. As we make that transition, you're feeling like you're squatting. That left hip is better than mm -hmm. what we've had, right? Yeah. So I will always, always ask you, if I give that, let's say I gave that an A minus, mm -hmm. okay? It's a good enough repetition. What can you pull from it? So when you're left on your own, you don't have Coach Rick there, yeah. how will you know if you do it right or not? Because ball flight will not always tell us. You're athletic enough to still make a ball go where you want it to go and still cheat a little bit, Yeah. okay? So again, I might be asking the same darn question every time, but as you hit ball and, and maybe you increase speed, does the feel stay the same for you? For this one or just generally? For this specific exercise, we're oh. saying, I want you to, instead of what we don't want, which is the early extension, we're maintaining posture. Yeah. We're getting very specific in what the glute muscles are doing. We load right, we get into the left. You've told me there's a slight squat move. Yeah. And what you're feeling with the feet. That, that's mm -hmm. what our, what our goal was, yeah. that's our intention. Mm -hmm. As we are now putting a ball there, adding some speed, when you're hitting, you're gonna hit another one right now. What yeah. is your intention? What do you want to achieve on this? Just the squat move, basically, to get this. Perfect, Yeah. right? Now you have something clear that you can, as a feedback loop, go, oh, did I do it or not? Yeah. I just wanna make sure, have you felt enough of the squat move properly mm -hmm. to know what it feels like? Right now, yeah. Perfect. Sure. But the, you did ask a good question in regards to like full speed, like swinging Carter. Like that last one, I was a little off balance and Correct. I felt that. Do you want me to just dial it back such that I'm in balance doing this or? Correct. Okay. So we go to the point of the, the breaking point. Yeah. Is it 50%, 60%, 70%, 82%, right? And then you find that at 88%, whoa, my balance is off, back mm -hmm. it off a little bit. Yeah. Okay. At this stage, we're in what we call kind of this mechanical mode practice right now. Yeah. We're hitting to a network right now. We don't even know where the ball's going. <laughs> yeah. This is fine to be the perfectionist that you are. Mm -hmm. I want to do this perfect, awesome. But one thing at a time mm -hmm. to be perfect, okay? I want this and then this. And then you increase speed, uh-oh, I lost it. Back at a bike off. We need enough good reps at slow speed and then a little bit faster, a little faster. I do want to know where the breaking point is, obviously. Yeah. So yes, back off to do the rep properly. Mm -hmm. I need you to make that your default now. I need that to be your new habit, right? Okay, whatever the ball does, it does. Did you achieve the squat move? Yeah. Great, do it again. Achieve it? Uh, that one was a little different feel. Um, I don't know if I, 
actually achieved it, it was like a little more like this rather than. That's the feedback loop. Less balls, yeah. but more intention on the first, like uh, that's all I'm gonna do. Squat, squat, squat. You hit it, did I achieve it or not? Yeah. What's the feel? Mm -hmm. You need to ask those questions. So many golfers, we call it hit and scrape. Hit, scrape a ball, and hit, scrape. And there, there's no intentionality behind it anymore. Yeah. And it's a blur. They go, I just hit 100 balls in 20 minutes. Holy smokes, what did I accomplish? Yep. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be slower. Yep. And this is an important part of our golf swing. There's no question. So yeah. this <laughs> is a priority. If you get that, it's going to be, it's going to translate throughout the entire set. Yeah. Okay. I know we uh, want to post and get to that uh, wall. Yes. That's similar in this move then. Um, so if that, we have a wall here, right? Just, you get you get there plenty, yeah. right? <laughs> and then just yeah. kind of get in there. Okay, got it. So that's why I like the idea of kind of here is that I think you've, you've trained enough to get to your left side now. Yeah. So we just fun. now need to train that the left butt cheek is going to come and feel like it goes over here. So on this one, do, you're gonna have the same intention. I will video the front for you. Did you feel like you uh, accomplished the squat? Yeah, okay. I think so. So now if we looked at it from this angle, we can't see the squat from this angle as much, but we certainly can see the lateral bump. There's no question you get there. You can almost okay, cool. even see that uh, pole in the background, right? Yeah. Boom. It straightens and we go around it. So I think that's where, that's a good question. It's like, okay, Rick, I understand I'm doing this, this, but yeah. did I lose this? Mm -hmm. No, you were perfect. Okay, cool. You got to here, no problem. Mm -hmm. We are trying to now work on specifically of how do I maintain that pelvis in a certain area from it to go early extension. Mm -hmm. You're saying, if I feel a squat, you've talked a little bit about some foot pressure. Yeah. That, that's really important for you to have that feedback. But that looks really, really good. Okay. Okay. Well, I think we said another two, three thousand today is what our. Yeah. And we may have to cut and edit this one later. Yeah. Fast forward when I'm perfect at this. <laughs> Feel it? Yeah. I might have over exaggerated to the point where I went like way over here. Uh huh. And then that caught in the, got me a little out of balance. Okay. But I definitely felt it. Great. And, no, and yeah. it's key to know where do we lose balance from. Yeah. If you early extend, I could almost guarantee that weight's going to go more into the toes, right? My pelvis goes this way. Yeah. And I'm going to have to go and rock back this way. Um, is different than you'll see a lot of these top players now creating speed and their left foot literally moves backwards. Mm. So guess what? Their momentum's going this way. Yeah. Which is kind of what we're asking, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you say, oh, I overdid it in my move, I go, that's better yeah, yeah, yeah. than moving into the toes. So that's mm -hmm. where in the future we'll talk about ground force and all this other cool stuff. Yeah. But for you to be aware of like that felt different, but the opposite way, that's a good thing. That's awesome. a good sign. So before we go to the other questions, mm -hmm. usually a question pops up is, oh, do I want to have that feeling for all my clubs? My short answer is yes. <laughs> okay. But realize that when I go from nine iron to five iron, ultimately the driver with the stance changes. Yeah. There is obviously a little more <clears throat> lateral to get to here and you have to be more flexible to do it. I think we're having no problem with you because you're yeah. working out hard, you're getting the separation we need, but that's a question that's asked all the time. Yeah. It's very similar, okay? So okay. I don't want us to go up, well, what's my five iron? Is that different than my four iron? It's like, no. There's probably a jump as we get into some fairway metals and to the driver where you may feel something different to get to the same spot. I was gonna ask because that bump and turn feels relatively natural on irons. And I hit on driver and it's very hard to kind of not get there, but uh, there's a disconnect between my mind and body where I end up just pushing this way, um, but. But no, that, that's, and we'll look at that certainly, but that's where I'm getting that width of stance now changes how much I yeah. have to travel. Yeah. And then, uh-oh, if I chase it with my upper body to yeah. do it, that's, count, that's counterproductive, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't wanna, this stays here. Yeah. But if this goes, oh, I can't get there, and I move everything forward, then we have, uh, like I said, it becomes counterproductive of how you did it. Yeah. So we'll stretch you and get you into that position. But I think what you did will translate mm -hmm. because you're gonna have a better understanding of, okay, driver, I can feel a squat. Try the same feel yeah. and see if there is any sticking points or if it's like, no, that really helped. And you may have to exaggerate a little bit. Yeah. Question number two, the takeaway and to the top of the backswing. Yeah because I have a tendency, and I've seen this since the beginning, um, is I'll, I'll kind of get like like this and yeah. get way too inside. And so I know like it should be a little more 
plane, but I don't have that feeling right now of like how to do that properly. And I know there's a, a hinging component and people do it early, late, but when I look at myself do it, it's kind of just all over the place and kind of sets me up, I, I think, a little bit for failure in, in regards to get back to the impact position. Sure. So this is a little bit of review. I know we've done some of this already, but I am a believer that the takeaway is important in the golf swing. So some instructors say, ah, you don't hit the ball on the way back and, you know, but I want to have as few compensations as possible, yeah, right? Exactly. If, if I took the club here, I'd have to find a, some way to bring it back to here. Yeah. Yet if I can keep it on a somewhat closer uh, plane, yeah. that is going to be less manipulation. Yeah. How we get there, as we've talked about in a previous video, is there's preferences. Mm -hmm. I can be on plane here, 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 and here. Yeah. Okay, it's on plane, but how I did it was different use of the wrist, different use of my body, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's where I have to be careful here. Yeah. I like to see a club on plane, yep. and we're gonna get you there. Yeah. You've said it's all over the place, and yeah, like if I hinge my wrist here, it's over here. If I set it up, it's here. If I lift my arms here, there's a lot of things that can happen in that first couple feet. Yeah. So I start with the basics, and this is always a good one to go back to, is the one piece takeaway idea, mm -hmm. where the club is just above belly button here. I grip down on the shaft, of course I'm not to the ball, and I take the club back. Now there's zero hand action, obviously, that's happening. Well, yeah. if I'm here and I keep the club in front of me, that's actually a pretty good takeaway. Yeah. That's zero hands. Yep. Now if I hinge a little bit, I'm exactly where I need to be. So let's start with that basic one first though. Okay. This, the club's gonna go in your belly button, go like this. Okay. Belly button. Get set up right above the belly button. And my eyes are still at where a ball would be. And I turn back and that club is still in the belly button, right? That would be called a one piece takeaway, right? Hands, arms, chest, upper back rotated through there, right? Yeah. Now, that's a little extreme, mm -hmm. right? We, we don't see kind of anybody who's just gonna stay like that forever, mm -hmm. okay? But when a lot of people say, how do I get the thing started? Yeah. I prefer more of my connection of my arms and my chest taking the club back than specifically anything with the hands. And that's going roughly where the club's gonna get to hip height here in a moment. So. See, now it starts to get inside a little bit, but. And then, uh, sorry, this is actually a preliminary question. You know how I started bending a little more here? This is going this, or is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we started getting into uh, shoulder planes. Yeah, shoulder planes. Correct? Yeah. Um, so if we get into proper posture, okay, and there's a slight tilt at setup, I like to see that it's, it's, it's pretty clean as far as I would call a T-spine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not changing that, right? Yeah. So if you get into proper posture, we have this is part of the T, this is part of the T, right? Yeah. The letter T. Can you maintain the T as you go? Now, if I have this and this goes this way, that's not a T anymore. Yeah. If I go this way, where I stand up, that's not a T anymore more either, right? Does that make sense? Yes, that's I'm nice. rotating around that back and forth. You know, when we talk about driver and all that kind of stuff, there might be some changes that left shoulder goes higher and stuff like that. Let's go simplicity concepts yep. first mm -hmm. and then go from there. So I want to maintain my posture. If my posture was too upright here like this and I would turn, that'd be a very flat swing. If I was over here, it'd be very upright. So that's why proper posture setup is so important, mm -hmm. which I think you have, and then I'm just rotating around my spine. There wasn't any manipulation going on with that. Gotcha, and so now I'm here, and then one piece takeaway would just be? Bingo. Like here? Yep. And then from here up to the backswing, this is where I kind of get, when I hinge it, I end up going like that. Right, so, so we wanna feel like we're setting the wrist more, which oh. is the cocking of the wrist. Club mm -hmm. goes up, hinging, goes this way, and if we roll it, we're in trouble too, right? Yeah. So we're feeling that is what we would want more. Is that what I'm understanding? Yep, exactly. Because you have a slight roll, slight hinge, Yeah. and then the club is more stuck behind you slightly. Yep. Not that far off. Yeah. Um, we call it kind of the, the, the dog trying to catch its tail, right? Yeah. If it's, if it's way over here and I can never, can never catch it, we're trying to keep the club in front of you for as long as possible, mm -hmm. right? So the club should never get on takeaway should never hit me, for sure. Boom, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, shouldn't be hitting me here. And this just goes up like that. 
Right, that's the feeling you have up. It's still on an angle, by the way, right? Yeah. If it was up, it's still being set roughly to where the ball line is. Now, if I went here, we've got it way over there and here. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Sometimes we look at the butt end of the club yeah. to help us feel that. And so we're getting this up, yes. upward rather than this way? Correct. Mm, got it, okay. Yeah. This position, T-spine kind of here, mm -hmm. and then going up here. Good, I'm not letting you hit me. Good, good, good. <laughs> and then when I, but I'm like cocking it up here and then it's kind of just my my shoulders rotating. And again, so, we have to be careful. I, we used to use that term all the time is shoulder rotate. Your shoulders are not rotating, you're rotating around your spine. Oh, spine, right? yeah. So spinal rotation's happening here. Okay, right? yeah. Now we use this as kind of the baseline to say I'm, I'm turning my shoulders, but in actuality, I'm rotating around my spine. Okay, okay? that makes so sense. So if somebody's tight here, mm -hmm. they're gonna compensate, right? If, if I have, oh, if I'm tight, we tend to see people lift or we tend to see people slide. They're trying to create a swing because they, can't, they don't have that rotation. I know you've worked really hard with your physical trainer. If you sat down, right, and we just look at mobility, mm -hmm. it'd be nice to have more mobility yeah. without having to use other things to do that. Okay. And I think we're in good shape. It's now you're just asking the question of, what should I be using? What, where should it be going? And we're refining it right now. Yeah. So from that, I would say that I would like a little more of a one-piece takeaway, but okay. I think we're gonna do a preset drill again. We're gonna go to here and hold, and then go back and hit it. There's gonna be two things I think we do need to work on though. This part we can get you here, no problem. It's what, like you said, what do I do from here to next is I want you to feel like you're setting it when we do it, okay? okay. So it's like going this way. Then we'll talk about the rotation part in a second. And that one piece takeaway, you don't want me to hinge it at all? You are gonna hinge it, but the Slightly. feeling of a one piece is what I'm going for. Okay. Because when I first met you, there was a little overactivity of what the hands were doing. Yeah. We're quieting them down. Now we're retraining them how to use it from there. Got it. So let's do a preset, which we're gonna to go to here and hold. Bingo, love it. You're gonna make a full swing from here. You're gonna literally go from here and go all the way out, but your focal point is feeling that, okay? Yeah. Set and go. Whoa, that's, that's completely different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna, without hitting this ball, I'm gonna video the practice swing. Should I not be worrying about my lower body right now, or? One thing at a time, <laughs> sir. Come on. We're not multitasking. Trick question, guys. Multitasking. <laughs> One thing at a time. Right. You are, I told you to do a preset. Set the wrist. Come on. All right. <laughs> Good. Set it. So again, I know it feels different, as it should, and it should look different, right? Yeah. Okay, bingo, right? Yeah. That's exactly where we want it. Now I'm saying set and go. It looks completely different. Beautiful. And I've always thought the set, okay, that might actually help me get it impact better. Because I always thought the set was a hinge. So then it was always totally. like that. Yeah, okay. so I can you know, set the wrist, I can hinge it, right? So hinging. Club's here, setting is here, Yeah. rotation is here. So it is pretty dang important to <laughs> yeah, yeah, understand yeah. what we're working on. Some people are the opposite, honestly. They just pick the club up, yeah. they have zero hinge. Yeah. So it, it's blending the two. Okay. Yep, exactly. And you'll see sometimes, I don't think yours is a strength issue, but some people cannot even do that at all. They have no mobility here. It's like they have frozen wrists or something, or mm -hmm. they don't have strength in their forearm to make this do that, so they default mm -hmm. to that. So oh, some okay, of it's physical, it. but some of it, I think for us, is just getting a little more detailed on what that is. Yeah, I didn't even feel that before. Okay, cool. Oh yeah. man, that, make, that makes, that looks way better. <laughs> looks way better than what I've been doing. Um, and then the last thing, Whoa, 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 after, time, time. after he, this is a pre- Wait a second, he, he, he already feels like he's mastered it. I've mastered it, guys. Okay, uh, we kidding. haven't hit a ball, by the way, um, but he's, he's got it, he's got it. <laughs> well, okay, the, the question was about hitting the ball, the way to hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> We're still gonna do a preset drill with the ball now. Yeah. I'm going baby steps with this, right? Baby <laughs> yeah. steps, baby steps. You wanna run, I need some crawling first, okay? okay? I got you, I got you. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna get preset drill, okay? Preset drill, yeah. Uh, but we're gonna hit a ball, okay? okay. Because I do what, you, you mentioned it could affect your impact. Of course it could. That's why we're here. We wanna make optimal impact. Yeah. So preset, club's coming to me, bingo. You're feeling like you're setting it and go. Okay, this one you're doing on your own, you're gonna hit the ball, good. Good job. Visually, 
it, uh, you accomplished what I wanted. Okay, yeah. You again, the guy who's feeling it. Did you feel, now that we're hitting balls, that same feel in the, in the wrist? Uh, at the top? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Wonderful, awesome. Yeah. So I gave it a check mark, you checked it off. Now we blend it without the, the drill. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no stopping now. Okay. No preset. Okay. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever the ball does, it does. Did you feel like you set the wrist? Yes. Great, so this is no stopping, no drill. It's us going in real time. Good. Now, for just this, because I know where your eyes are going, <laughs> they're going to the other stuff. For just that rep, yeah. did you feel like you accomplished the wrist? I think so. I think the initial one you showed me, though, was uh, it got higher earlier. I think yeah. I... Yeah. And, those, and that's yeah. where you can video a, a session that you're doing in real time. I don't necessarily need you to look at every single swing after every... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like 10 or so. Yeah. And then maybe <laughs> look at it, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But your goal is the feel part of that. Yeah. Then after maybe 10 reps, you go, oh, I wonder how that looked. Mm. Huh, that wasn't quite as high as what I thought. You know, that's the feedback loop we also need. Yeah. Ball flight right now is less important. Yeah. It's gonna be important pretty soon, don't yeah. get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But can we get to here to here? And then from here to here, that's what your main question was. Yes. Here to here was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah. Then here to here is gonna take a, a little bit of work specifically with that, that wrist set. Gotcha. Okay. That first one you showed me, that's the ideal. Yes. Yeah, that's the one that... At this point right here, Yep. this shouldn't go a little this way. It should just go... You're going to have to feel that. Yeah. It's going to be a blending. So yeah. Please, because now where did the club go? It went this way. Yeah. We, of course, want the club to go here. There's a little bit of that going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've had this. Yep. Oh, yeah, drastically. We're trying to feel that. It'll end up going pointing at ball line. Mm, okay. It is going to feel this. Yep. In reality, it's going to be here. But we definitely want to minimize that. Ready? Chop. Boom. There it goes. Okay, got it. The feeling of the ball coming off the face gives you some feedback. Yeah. Which is fine. Our feedback needs to be, did you think you accomplished our goal? I think it was hinging a little more than I wanted. Great, then do another rep to feel it a different then. So like in that case, mm. it's not the ball flight you wanted, you hit behind it. Yeah. But back to, did you accomplish the goal with the wrist? I think I'm just, I keep feeling the hinge still. It's like reverting back a mm -hmm. little bit. And, and that's why we started with slow motion <clears throat> and, and just slower and slower and stop and start, is that we need to retrain it. Yes. When we go to full speed, we're gonna to default to what's comfortable. Yeah. For sure, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of this, always this two steps forward, one step back process, yeah. okay? And again, we all wanna get better as fast as possible. I get it. Yeah, yeah. But you put this foundation in here and you do some stuff at home in the front of a mirror with some one piece, and then you do some preset, and then you do it in a mirror and you can see it set like that. And if you're just focusing on that, you'll learn it so much faster, Yeah. okay? then you're gonna blend it. It might be a practice swing without a ball. You're just gonna clip a tee or something, okay? Yeah. But once we get the ball there, we become a very outcome oriented and we want the ball to go well. And I think that's when we revert back to the old habits because this doesn't feel comfortable. I wanna hit it good. Yeah. And I'm saying right now it's okay for the ball <laughs> to have some different ball flights to it. We can iron that out. You are trying to get this pattern different. Figuring out this feeling and why I think I'm hinging it is because in slow motion, when preset, it's like here, and I can do that. But when it's fast, this gets, I think, a little too in, and Correct. then when I start doing that, it's hinging. Correct. So the feel for me might do everything earlier, and then it might just actually get into the right spots in fast motion. Yeah, and there's, there's again, there's a whole toolbox of drills we yeah. can get into. Like, yeah. well, another one is kind of a kickstart where we move the club forward first yeah. to move it back. Mm. So we're allowing the momentum to take it back yep. instead of piecing it. Yeah. So there's other things we can do. I just think because you want to do things just right, we have to break it down a little bit, yeah. have you understand it, have you feel it, and we blend it more and more and more. Mm, but yep. you brought a great, really good question, and now we're creating a solution for it, but now obviously the repetitions have to be there. No, for and sure. it's okay to start with static stuff in front of a mirror, and then 50% speed without a ball, and then with a ball, and then going from there. But it has to be almost like chunking your practice time 
into 30 minutes of just setting wrist today. That's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna have some other things you're working on, I know you, and then you do a block of that. Yeah. We can't multitask a, a golf swing. Yeah. Okay, Let, let's, let's own that part. Yes. We blend it other ways. We're gonna see different ball flights though. Yeah. You are gonna see some different things mm -hmm. and that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions about what we did with the wrists? No, in slow motion, it makes sense. I could feel it in slow motion. I think it's just repetitions and kind of just doing this in slow-mo until I could get to 100%. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So this makes sense, this makes sense. And then this, from here to the ball is where I think my biggest disconnect is right now because I could, just because of my, my past, I've been very handsy with the swing. I manipulated in ways that, yeah. And so I don't know what the arms are doing properly to get to the ball. Like I know some people try to get here. That still doesn't really make sense to me. And so I'm trying to figure out and piece that together in order to get to that impact position that everyone is in. Because as, as you've known, sometimes I have the tendency of going over top. Correct. And so I've been experimenting on my own. And when I'm at the top here, I would drop my hands so that that just avoids it. And then I try to rotate through, but then I see other things and all that stuff, so. And I want to stress that there's many, 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 many ways yeah. to get to the ball. Yep. That all work. Okay. But some of them are like what somebody's feeling versus what's really happening. Mm -hmm. uh, there might be tour pros that say, yeah, I drop my arms first. Sure. And we see 3D and everything that says, absolutely not, they don't. Mm -hmm. But they have to feel the exaggeration. Yeah. Or the opposite. They, they, they tend to swing so far under plane, they have to feel like they do this with the club. I'm gonna straighten my right arm. On video, they don't straighten their right arm. Yeah. So that's where we have to be careful here, is mm -hmm. that I understand people are gonna say, oh, I drop my arms, and then yeah, on yeah, video yeah. you see it doesn't drop, it's the hand pass stays the same, you go, that didn't look like it dropping. Yeah. Feel and reel are, are, are really at play here. My belief, <clears throat> okay, and we've done some of the connection drills, I'm, I'm very much into, yeah. well, my arms started here, kind of makes sense for them to stay here. Not a biggie into losing connection and dropping, dropping it back. If I take it here, is my arm still in front of me? Yes. Are they still in front of me? Yes. Are they still in front of me? Yes. I think with good players, and you're going to find that with your hip speed, we could get the arms what we feel behind us. That's yeah. a good player's mistake, mm -hmm. right? And so then the question becomes, well, because they're behind me, should I go first with them? And my answer is no, usually. I would just then change up how this structure works. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of good players are tilted this way. That's yeah. why the arm's stuck, not necessarily because mm -hmm. their arms are over here. Let's start with the connection idea though first. Okay. okay? Yep. You're gonna, uh, and we've done head cover, glove. Let's start with uh, just the glove. Okay. Okay. And the glove's gonna go, we'll go under left arm first. Yep. And then we'll do right arm separately. Yeah. Just so you get a sensation. Okay. Okay. Yep. So something to put underneath the left armpit to feel the upper arm against the upper chest, right? We're trying to minimize the separation. Okay. One of my coaching philosophies is big, big picture stuff first, yep. and then we fine tune the little things. But I need to know how this engine is, is running. Okay. okay. So your only goal here is to keep that glove there the entire swing. It's going to feel very, very connected, obviously. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have to rotate to get through the ball, and the arms are now gonna be, I would say, harnessed a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you saying a uh, punch shot? Did you say that? Uh, let's do one punch shot because that's something that's always my fave. Yeah. Uh, is to be able to go to a punch shot finish, still keeping that connection with the arms and body. Okay. Do we keep the glove there? Yes. Yep. Do we stay connected to the arms in front of you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be just a simple warm up drill. Like, yeah. okay, everything's staying in front of me. Great. Now, as we extend and go from the punch up from, from here to here, from here to here, I still want the arms to stay in front of you. Mm -hmm. So now it's gonna be full swing. Okay. I know everybody wants to, again, multitask on it, but the point of the question was, you know, how do yeah. I get from, from here to here? Yes, of course, is where the wrists were here is gonna affect that, I get that. Yeah. But right now I'm trying to give you a concept of, well, if my arms are in front of me here and connected, if I just keep them there, that's fine. Now, if my, I'm gonna exaggerate this, if my hip went way over here, then I tilted, uh-oh, I'm stuck. Yeah. And then this happens and then I get disconnected here. Yeah. Because you have enough speed and enough physical strength, flexibility to stay what we say over the ball. That's a good thing, we mm -hmm. want that. 
But if I get stuck and I'm like, and my arms drop and then I'm here and I, then we get disconnected, I've lost that. So I'm trying to have you feel like you're staying over the ball um, with body and the arms are just always staying in front of you. What do you mean by over the ball? So if I'm going from the front view here, good players tend to tilt. Yeah. Club behind, stuck. Yeah. So the sternum went this way. Mm -hmm. What we're feeling is can we stay the same? Oh, I see. Over the ball instead of away from on this, the ball. On the spine. Correct. Okay. So this is going to affect low point. Yeah. And if I'm here, I'm gonna feel like I'm stuck. And that's where people, oh, I gotta get my arms here. It's like, well, if you kept this back where it is, there's no need to make any adjustments. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? To keep you a little bit more centered, right? And then just rotate. So again, it's easy because you're a good athlete to manipulate, oh, I'm here, I'll just flick at it and yeah. get away with it every now and then. Yeah. I don't want us compensating. Yep. But if I'm, if I'm back to, what's called delivery position, and I can get you back to here, which is what you're asking. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm not, right? So I'm, this is moved, mm -hmm. right? I don't, wanna go, I don't wanna go down another rabbit hole. I wanna yeah, keep yeah, yeah, staying yeah. here, okay? So that's why I'm saying staying over the ball here. That makes sense. When we first met, yes, we had some slide. Yes. But if I start improving and I start going, I'm gonna get stuck. Yeah. That's not an arm issue. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So and essentially, pop. this is here, and then I'm just here. This point is still at the ball, and then I'm coming in, and the point is still at the ball. Is that what? If that's how you want to process it, I, 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 I don't know if I would say it that way, but I'm yes. also, because your body was in the right spot, I would say then yes, if that's how you're processing it. What, yeah, I guess over the but, ball. But you've stayed. You've yeah. stayed in the space, though. Yeah. And you've stayed in, in this space without yeah. it moving off. Mm -hmm. Or what we're talking about in the future is good players go here and tilt. Yeah. Less space here. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, I got stuck. So my arm's in the wrong position. Okay. Well, okay. But if this is not dealt with, you can get all manipulative with the arms and be in trouble. You're going to feel, this is where I have to be careful. You're going to feel... Yeah like your sternum is going more here than here. Yeah. More rotational. Then your arms can stay in front of you a little bit easier, okay? Okay. So like that, essentially. Correct. So your main question to me was, how do I get back down to the ball, correct? Yeah. This is the lower end of our priorities because part of this is that I have to train this to work properly. Yeah. So then this can work properly. Yeah. If this is out of sorts, good luck with this. Yeah. Okay. So you're, right now we're specifically working on, we're gonna say staying over the ball or covering the ball a little bit better, staying connected. So does that avoid the, an over the top move then? No, it does not. Oh, okay. Which, which we get into a little more specific. I'm kind of answered the question as a precursor to where you're gonna be later. When you're scratch, yeah. the tendency for really good players is to be under plane yeah. and stuck. So I'm trying to give you what I want you to do is, is to get feeling of the club is gonna stay here, not here. You are correct. Sometimes you're over. Last time we talked a little bit about shoulders, yeah. okay? And this may seem counter to what I just said. <laughs> yeah. But if I move laterally, yeah. with my upper body, the club stays this way. Yep. So I, I said that if the shoulder went up, the club would drop a little bit. Yeah. So this is why we're talking so much about shoulders and spine and all that kind of stuff because it has effects on that. Mm -hmm. Specifically, if we're going now down the road of, oh, I don't want to come over the top. Yeah. I really believe <clears throat> that when you keep improving the lower body, that's going to take care of 50% of it, honestly. Mm. Because it's back to the sequencing is now better. If this was off, like this way, you're having to but if you can feel like you're, you know, the old skipping the rock idea that we can be here, that lower body is a key piece of this. Okay. Then we move it up here and I want it to rotate here. I want you to stay connected because if this engages, right, move it away from that. So we're gonna flip flop. We're gonna go glove underneath right arm now. And 
that feeling I just just focused on my lower body. This move that I do. Yep. This naturally kind of correct. Bring, okay. Correct. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is like, let's improve that. Yeah. I think we're going to see an improvement. Yeah. There's yeah. going to still be time, especially with your um, longer clubs. There might be still an over the top move. Yeah. Let's not be too concerned with that right now. Okay. okay. That lower body is so super important as far as the transition and how we use the ground and all that kind of stuff. So right now we flipped it to the glove is on the right side. You're gonna feel probably flatter a little bit. This is more for your downswing, okay? okay. It's probably a little overdone over here, right? We would want a little more space. Yep. So just realize it's more done so we don't go this way. Yeah. We're staying connected here. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Okay, feel connected? Super connected. <laughs> yeah, I bet, right? It almost feels like you're in a straight jacket. Yeah. <laughs> Which we may have to put on you later anyways. <laughs> Just generally, <laughs> Just <laughs> not even from a swing. <laughs> Do one more minute video of this one. Okay. So that'll be an interesting one. It's solid, but you're yeah. gonna still see that the club is a little bit steeper on the way down. Yeah. Only working, even though that takeaway was pretty good, by the way. So we're gonna try to keep that close. It does look like the, clout, the shaft wants to flatten a little bit, right? Yeah. Not quite as steep, right? But it, yeah. No, it's closer to the forearm right there is what I'm looking at. Mm. There's been times where the shaft has been above the forearm. So like you're, you're neutralizing much better in there, in there. Nobody would ever say that's over the top. But it's a little steep, yeah. With this particular club, of course that's not gonna hurt you. But if we looked at future clubs, yeah. could that get in too much? I agree. But that was pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. um, and you felt on a few of them, let's say five or six reps ago, that connection helped you feel something different though, right? Helped you feel, some people say under, some people say uh, swinging to the right. So I don't, I don't know what the sensation was. All I know is that helped you get to here, arms in front of you in a good delivery position. When you say arms in front of you, can you Right, so, so we start here. Yep. And you just did that little drill and it's, it's here. Now what happens if, turn your hips really fast, there we go and then I had you here, that arm is behind you, behind you. Oh, I see. In front of you, right? That's subtle, but that's important. When the uh, lower body goes really fast, and then you have a good player and they go back in here, they're stuck, they go, oh boy, and then they have to flip. Mm -hmm. So you'll have, um, with some good players, we do a lot of right arm only drills. So instead, they get like back here and they get stuck, stuck, and then if we do a right arm only, Right, we're feeling like there's freedom here, but not back in here. Would you say, you know how we did those um, chip drills where it's like this, and then it's kind of just using your body, is that the feeling with your swing? Yeah. It really is, so chipping and pitching sometimes can be considered <clears throat> a miniature golf swing, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm just gonna go here to here, right? Why do anything fancier? And then I go a little bit more, and a little bit more, mm -hmm. and a little bit more. Yes, there's more, hip speed and there's more, there's a lot more speed, I get that. Yeah. Basic concepts, pretty close. Okay. Okay, because even if a little pitch shot, you may see my lower body microsecond go ahead of everything else, just a little bit, yeah. but that's the sequencing. So yes, but then it does change with the speed that we create later. Yeah, I'm trying to feel this again. I, I didn't get, I didn't even know I did that correctly, the, the, the first rep. Oh, okay, so you didn't kind of stamp it as a successor. Yeah, right? so I didn't know that feel, so I should be feeling here, and then... Yep. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. See, to me, this is about being a good student. You're, you're paying attention to one thing at a time. You may experiment a little bit. You may question how it felt, good. Yeah. But then when you click into <clears throat> it, and you go, oh, that was different in a good way. Yeah. What specifically was different, Yeah. right? That sometimes tough to articulate, but we want to repeat that. Yeah, right now, I know the feeling for this legs. Like, right. that's ingrained in my mind right now. Awesome. This one is ingrained in my mind at slow speed. This one, not yet. <laughs> Keyword was sure. yet. Yeah. Everybody, that's growth mindset talking yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, baby. Easy. It feels like I'm go going, I guess, under. Touch, okay. I think what you've improved on is that this move is better and it will only get better when you start working on the squat more. Yeah. It is a fraction higher there than I would like. Yeah, that's that's what I usually end up doing. Correct. Which is like why I dropped the arms, because I was like, I want to stop doing that, but. But see, if we 
drop arms, does that mean we're not steep? Like I, I can have somebody who still drops arms and the shaft goes this way. Yeah, okay, so, so my, I guess my sensation was up here and I drop it here. Uh, yeah, I would be careful on that. I, yeah. Let me go a different route with you on okay. this. If you look from that angle. Now if we go just to hands, yes. which I haven't done a ton of stuff with you on, Yeah. is what do we want this to point? I'm gonna go very, very simple on this one. Yeah. We've talked about proper takeaway, set, on the way down, can I get the butt end to point at the ball for as long as possible? That's not pointing at the ball. That would be over the top. Yes. We're getting there, there we go. Yeah. And then that would be too far under. Yeah. And there's devices on the market, right? Lasers and stuff like that, or this is the real expensive one. I'll, <laughs> I'll give you a deal on it. So we've got the old T in here, right? To give you a visual. Yeah. Like if that T is pointing at the, <clears throat> the ball and not pointing at my feet, that would be more forearms and hands, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. I was trying to get the arms to make sure they weren't going away. Yep. Now we get into some details here, right? How does that club? You're seeing a lot of players, they're starting to, to bow wrist and go like this. It's not a true dropping, I don't think, mm. but it's certainly where, now look where it's, it's pointing here. Maybe we look at that a little bit more to give you a different intention. And in that last video of me, what's, what are, I mean, we could So you were that. doing pretty good here, yeah. and then the shaft would go here. So now the butt end was pointing towards your feet mm. instead of keeping it there for a lot longer. I guess that's why I'm, um, I think my body reacts to doing this because I've always been confused of like, how does this, if I'm going this way, how does this hit the ball? Like, okay. is it, or is it? <laughs> it's not that one. <laughs> yeah, okay. like, so yeah, um, I guess I get No, but, but I mean, I, again, the, the, if I went like this and I know there's no hinging, is how is that club gonna get to the ball? Gravity just goes, boop, and hits yeah. it, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to trust that there, there's a lot of momentum going. The club's gonna get there. Okay. We don't have to, help it, yeah. it's gonna get there. Okay. But I think we're trying to put yourself in a position, um, like if we use this whole thing here, if we put you in a position where it's roughly on, mm -hmm. and I can just go faster and faster and faster, we're trying to figure out when do we go off of that, mm -hmm. and why, yep. right? Before, I didn't think your lower body was good enough. Yep. I felt it was spinning. Yep. We're doing better here. Yeah. Then I felt if we can get our chest to be here, great. Now we still have a little grab happening right about here, which we could maybe say is hands. Mm. So could I get that butt end to point to here, and then it points parallel, and it points back, but right here to here, there's no manipulation happening. Can I try this real quick? Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's not perfectly set up for, and, and nobody has this type of plane, yeah. but I want you to, to understand the reference here of, like this is maybe a fraction flat up in there, yeah. but on the way down we get back to here. Oh, okay. So the thing is, the club head can stay behind us, but I still want the arms to stay in front of our body. Yeah, I guess I've just never trusted that it would get there when I'm just Where else could it go? Um, I guess I, when I'm thinking it's like this, it's gonna go out more. It's if I- go up more? Out. Out more. Yeah, so if this is the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't know, like, um, I guess this is my question in regards from here to here, how much am I holding on to this? Ah, uh, okay, I don't like yes. that word holding on. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what, am I just releasing this or? I, I guess it's our definition of release, uh, which would be a whole other video series. Back in the, we're talking when I first started golf, you know, a release had a lot to do with people rolling their arms and I think releasing the club face this way. Most of the time when we talk about release, we're talking about this angle. Remember, we worked on this angle, yeah. and how does it unset? That would be releasing that energy, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm telling you that if I'm trying to time it or something like that, that's counterproductive. Yes. The other one is I'm holding on, which is very popular nowadays. Yeah. I don't believe it can be done. Okay. I think it's counterproductive. Okay. So can I now hear and then turn, and knowing that that force is going to bring it back is what you need to trust. So that force is the unsetting part. The unsetting, which you're not consciously doing. <laughs> oh, okay, got see? it. See? Yeah. I'm I not see. going set, unset. Yeah. Set, I'm going to kill somebody. Yeah, they're setting, it's blending, it's unsetting, but I'm not consciously going 
I always talk about the basketball, right? Yeah. So when do you know when to let it go? I don't know, it's a feel for me. Oh, it's a feel. Yeah. <laughs> You'd make fun of me if I was in the gym. Yeah. Right? Okay. But if I'm... Yeah. This is... This, we're releasing it, yes. But I don't want you consciously thinking about that. And so your body just needs to be in the right positions and this is essentially gonna just... I'm looking at a sequence of events. Yes. To make it easier for that whip to occur. I don't know if you've ever used a whip. I had an old teacher back in the day. He had a whip. I go, holy... <laughs> and he would just go like, you know, if I try to go like this with the whip, there's nothing. But it would like, yeah. then it had a lot of speed at the end of that whip, yeah. right? But if I try to force it, there's nothing there. That makes sense? Gotcha. If I go fast, there's nothing. But I'm not, honestly, I'm not thinking about using the hands. It's a sequence chain reaction. Gotcha. But you said a key word. I don't know if I can trust, because I don't know if they club. You have to get past that because you're not trusting it and you're manipulating because you don't think you can get back to the wall. Yeah, that's exactly. Mm -hmm. It'll get there. <laughs> I know you do, no, no, I'm serious. So you do it in slow motion, you go, really? My body's way over here. But from here to here, it shuts down so fast. Boom. Yeah, that's that's my disconnect because I'm just like, how in the world is this gonna get there? Well, it will. But so the rotation part of all this is like, so it's kind of like this. And then this is kind of releasing on its own, and this is kind of getting it to time it. Correct, and, it, and it'll stall at a certain point once you get to the ball. But yeah. we, we now have learned that it's okay for the, the chest to also rotate. This is something that actually happens to me a bit, is like when I am rotating this at full speed, my head kind of just goes with it. Yeah, that's not a big deal. I mean, it's not a big we deal. We have David Duvall, Annika Sorenstam, Hendrik Sensen, some of these players where they almost went and you'd see the head just swivel with the spine, right? Um, again, the misnomer of keep your head down and all that stuff. We're, we're not necessarily having to keep our eyes there forever, right? Our head there forever, because that'll eventually hit it. It's fine, and this is an extreme, to have that on a Sorensen swing where it's kind of... Now, did I raise my head? No, my head swiveled with my spine. Yeah. I didn't change posture, though. That's, that happens to me a bit when I'm going crazy speed. We want speed. some freedom, right? Yeah. Okay, so kind of just to recap here of what we've kind of talked about in regards to the takeaway. So we're here, now we're kind of setting this, and then we do the, like, and this is, I just gotta trust that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. so from here, club head is slightly inside hands, right? Yeah. We're, boom. Yeah. Right, so it, it'll fall without us trying to hit it. Okay, because that's like what I've been trying to do. I'm just like, what is this timing to release it? And it's, it hasn't worked out. <laughs> so when we look at back to foundational and how I like to coach is I kind of cut people in half. I cut them yeah. down here, what's going on down here. Uh, we don't want a lot of Elvis stuff going on. Yeah. We want stability. We want to be able to use that properly. Today we mm -hmm. talked about the ways to stay in posture and still get the most of how that lower body works. Mm -hmm. Super important, yeah. foundation. Then I go, okay, if this is, let's say it's a BB plus, yeah. then we can start paying attention to here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then we pay attention to the arms, then we pay attention. So I wanna see this come from the ground uh, up yeah. to see if there's any manipulations or compensations happening, right? If yeah. I'm out of position here, I have to find a way to get back. So mm -hmm. I'm probably more of less compensation type of swing. Yeah. And so then when we talked about takeaway, and backswing, yeah, it's important. Where the club is, is important. So we're keeping the club a little more in front. Yes. We're now setting the wrist instead of hinging the wrist. Yeah, for sure. That gave you a different sensation. That's gonna help what is already a pretty good backswing. You have some good stability on the way back, yeah. okay? And then we, the, the last part, which is just super important, is certainly we wanna minimize this too steep of a shaft here. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that I would start like you to be connected a little bit more to keep it here instead of maybe manipulate the arms. Yeah. And then we finally talked a little bit now about how much, you know, am I holding it on? No. Yeah. Am I trying to hit it with the hands? No. You have to trust that the club is going to follow mm -hmm. when those other pieces are in place. And so in regards to drills, I know this connection drill, do you recommend yes. any other drills for this downswing? For the downswing? Yeah. I'm looking in the future, not necessarily for now, but yeah. I, I really do believe if you can have the sensation of what a right arm only drill does 
and, and you can feel that you're just brushing the ground here. Now, if I go steep, or if I, what we call dump the shaft, you're not even hit the ball. Yeah. So this kind of helps with the timing. Now I can go faster or slower, but I'm trying to match that. I think that one's a good one. It's more for long-term, but yeah. I think short-term gives you a sensation of, of doing that. We could do one where we talked a lot about takeaway position, and if I get back to delivery position, which is different. Yes. And then I just from here stopped, and then I just turned. I just turned. Club got to the ground. Yeah. Ball popped up. Mm -hmm. That's something that you could do also. How did you just do that, Wade? So <laughs> the delivery <laughs> position's here. This Young is like. Young Jedi. Come on. <laughs> just turn. And you're. Oh, look at the club. Where is it going? Oh, it's going to the ball. But, it... <laughs> but what? Don't, don't give me the butt one. Just turn. <laughs> Thank you. How'd you do that, oh Jerome? Oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Delivery position's where we want it. Yeah. I'm here, right? That's not, so takeaway is here. Delivery is here, right? I'm more lower body. And then how do I get to the ball? I just turn, turn, turn. Okay, and that's why I'm chunking it when I'm here because I'm not turning enough. Correct. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, that's awesome. Th that whole thing I had with casting, because I, when I'm going at so fast speed, it ends up kind of like going like that. But if I'm like setting this properly and rotating, it shouldn't really be casting or how? We have to define casting, right? So yeah. what I look at is, let's say we're gonna go roughly here. This is a 90 degree angle. Yeah. Okay. On the way down, we wanna keep that angle 90, 90, 90. We start giving away a little of it right here. Yeah. And then of course we give away all of it from here to here. Yeah. Casting would be that I'm here mm -hmm. and I've lost almost all of it by the time my hands are here. I'm casting the fishing rod. So we're trying to maintain it. I didn't say hold on. Yeah maintain that to here. Club head is slightly above hands. If the club head was below hands at this point of the golf swing, we've already casted it. Mm -hmm. There's a few players on tour, like a Sergio, maybe the club is way up here already. They have a, a ton of lag. Yeah. I'm just asking for about here. Okay. And then as we turn, there will be some of that energy and force that goes that way. So my swing kind of goes here, here, and then it gets a little like right A here. little bit, a little, a little bit. bit. And I think you, you, I would say you're probably around here is where you're already giving it away. Yeah. You're doing first good move, boom, and then it starts to travel a little more this way. Okay, so I should kind of just have a feeling of like halfway point still kind of in here. Yeah. So yeah, it's so a slight again, I'm, I'm more of a, my philosophy is again, how do I make this, this engine work? Yeah. And if I make that engine work properly, the arms go along for the ride, the hands don't have to do much. Okay, gotcha. And then we spoke about this last time because I have a super strong grip. I think that was great for me when I started. Should I keep it? I would like us to keep it for the next couple weeks. Okay. I wanna see what the changes we've made with this and the connection stuff like that, what that does. Okay. You may find like, oh, Rick, I'm hitting there's this baby, baby draw. We go, great, let's not mess with it. Yeah. But if we're doing those other things properly yeah. and we're seeing whatever, it could be a block, but we're seeing too much rotation this way and we're seeing big hooks and we may have to adjust. Okay. I'm hesitant because it's a solid grip. That's when we'll let ball flight be our guide more. Okay. But let's give that a couple weeks because yep. uh, these are some big things for us to drill and then we can look at cause and effect. Okay, sounds good. For the five iron is mainly where I go over top the majority, like crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you a device in the next couple weeks. Uh, it's a new training aid that will help put alignment sticks in a certain spot of what I'm gonna do right now. Okay. okay. But right now, I'm gonna just have you make some golf swings. Uh, this is called shoulder plane here first, is that your club has to stay below that. Mm -hmm. So make a full swing. And on the way down. Good. I'm just moving slightly different angle. Stays below it, below it. All trying to achieve the same goal. Yeah. Please don't hit the club. Okay. So those were all ways to Again, there's no ball there. Yeah. Minimize somebody coming over the top. If you came over the top, you may have clicked me a little bit or, or hit me. Mm -hmm. Any feel on those? Uh, for the last one, it was, I just, I felt like way more connected here to get it under. Okay. Yeah. Great. Did any of those feel more neutral or slightly under? Way under. Way under. Okay. Like this. Great. Now, you can cheat on the down, on the backswing and take it inside. That's yeah. not what we're asking. Oh, okay. This is a downswing drill. Oh, okay. Okay. On the downswing, you swing under to this, okay? So 
hit a ball like that. Now again, we can't see total ball flight there. Did that feel underneath? Did that feel over the top? Did it feel? It felt underneath. Great. But the problem with me is like the majority of the time it feels underneath. Oh, okay. And I'm just like, oh, the reality with a five iron. I'll feel underneath a nine and I'll look a video underneath. Had the same swing and it's like slightly and, but it was going so fast. It's like, oh yeah, that was a good swing. No, yeah. and this is the, the little things where what we worked on physically will help this. And then some people, nine iron, seven iron, they swing, let's say they swing at 80% and they have a good rhythm and a good tempo and a good sequence. Mm -hmm. And then they get to a five iron and they feel like, oh, I gotta hit it harder or something like that. I'm not saying that's for you, but that harder or wow, I gotta get the most out of it causes the wrong muscle group now to yeah. go after it, which could be a feel different. And then driver gets, of course, much, much worse yeah. because we, we want to hit the crap out of the ball and we use and engage the wrong muscle groups. We want the same swing. Yeah. Right? So let's do it again. I'm gonna put it back down here now. Did that feel under? Yeah, totally. Great, and I think that ball was gonna draw. So we would know that the path was to the right and the club face was closed. Yeah. So that's a good thing, yeah. right? So it gets back to, I can put that all day long and next time again, I'm gonna give you a training tool that'll help put that there. Okay. To help you be able to work on it on your own. Okay, I kinda just wanna talk about driver quickly. Let's do it. This is basically the same thing with a takeaway here, but the hint, there isn't really, is there a set? Better be a set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's gonna happen if it doesn't? Now, I would maybe say that the takeaway needs to be a touch more patient on the driver. Okay. It's a long club. Yeah. So if, if I move that club with my hands, that club's already way going out in front of me. Patience. You wanna hit the ball hard, hit it on the downswing hard and, and yeah. unwind and go fast. It doesn't do us much good getting a little quick in this area because I think it then sets the tone for the rest. So to answer your question, do the proper takeaway, that club head is still in line with the hands, awesome. We're now going to feel like we're setting as we're turning, and those then. principles stay the same. We have a wider stance, so now we have to feel, when we go back to this idea now, that, yeah. that left glute going in here, you have a little bit more to travel because it's a wider stance. Yeah, for sure. But the concept's the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. This is still pointing. Correct, and again, right now we're talking neutral. At ball line is a good one, slightly inside ball line is fine. On the yeah. way back, not a lot of players, good players have been flatter than that. There's a few, but let's stay no neutral now and see what happens. Yeah. But butt end of the club is gonna be at ball line. The, the miss I'm getting on my drivers right now, it'll go straight and go to the right. Yeah. And soon because my club face is a little open when I'm impact. It's open to path and your path we know is a slightly left. Okay, yeah. so the ball curves away from the path. And yeah, the club face is, is open. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm not gonna say, oh, roll the rest or anything like that. I really, really believe that as we work with this better and less tension in here, yeah. the club head will get back, club face, excuse me, will get back to square a little bit easier. And this is, again, I just need to trust that. Yeah, it's you do. Release, yeah. It's a long club and, and, and to trust that even more, right? That club head is way over here and now you gotta, it's gonna get there in that time? Yes, it will. <laughs> oh okay. man, okay. Sounds we'll go good. There. A lot Already. of work today. A lot of work, a lot of work. You gotta grind, scratch tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Gotta work on those expectations now, too. Right? <laughs> Let's go!